Who in their right mind would think if I took a McDonald's hamburger and put it on a table in front of you and opened it up and I said, hey, I'm going to sell these and I'm going to make $5 billion a quarter, $20 billion a year. Who would think that would be even possible? But that's what happens. That's what's been happening since the 50s. So let's look at how a company like McDonald's can be so incredibly profitable selling such a horrible product because they're not selling the product, right? They're selling a solution to a problem. The product just happens to fill, it is the solution to that problem. Now, are they selling fine cuisine? Absolutely not. Are they selling the best burger in town? Absolutely not. But the people who are trying to sell the best burger in town aren't in business anymore and McDonald's has been in business, I believe, since 1955. How do they do it? What lessons can we learn as private practice owners from their track record? Well, let's break down the business model just a little bit. And I by no means am an expert on the business model, but there's enough public information out there that we can kind of discuss this. So I think most of you probably know McDonald's is one of the largest real estate holding companies in the world. When they open a new franchise, they buy the real estate and the business model of their real estate side of the business is we have a profitable restaurant. We can sell that restaurant to franchisees. We can sell the system, the processes, the training, the name recognition. We can sell that. And then we put that inside of a property that we own. So now they get the benefit of depreciation on the real estate. They get the benefit of appreciation on the value of the land. You know, if they were just in the restaurant business and they buy ovens and they buy equipment and they buy all this stuff to run a restaurant, all of that is depreciating in value. It's losing value the minute you buy it. That's the problem with a small mom and pop restaurant is you spend, I don't know, $100,000 on equipment and the next day it's worth less and less and less and less. Whereas with the McDonald's franchise, when they buy a piece of real estate, they get the tax benefit of depreciation, but the value of the real estate is worth more and more and more and more in most cases. So the business model. They have the real estate side of the business. They're increasing value of the asset and they're gaining the tax benefit of the depreciation. Then they're selling the model of the restaurant. They're selling to franchisees, so that's franchise, franchisees. They're getting income from that. They're getting income from the franchise fees and other stuff that's going on. My assumption is there's probably contracting and other things so that you have to buy McDonald's french fries and you have to buy McDonald's raw materials and McDonald's marketing and all of this stuff, right? So it's an entire ecosystem that produces a profit. And then of course they do have just a couple uh, company owned restaurants that are profitable and bringing in, in some money, but it's, it's negligible in the big scheme of things. But all of this is designed around the idea that I'm going to sell a crappy product because the product does not matter. The product fills the need, right? When somebody goes to McDonald's, why is the customer going to McDonald's in the first place? Number one, it's cheap. They can find a cheap solution to stop the sensation of hunger. For other people, it's about memories. They remember grandma taking them to their McDonald's, you know, on Sundays and getting french fries and dipping it in a chocolate milkshake. For others, it's the, the dopamine release you get when you first take a bite of that sandwich. It doesn't even taste that great but it's full of sugar and fat and salt. And you know, you, you've seen those posters where you leave a McDonald's hamburger uh, out on your countertop for three years and it looks the same as it did the day you bought it. There are so many preservatives in it and, and salt, but the bottom line is you're buying the experience for $2, $5, $8. You're buying a piece of history, you're buying an experience, you're buying a solution to hunger, you're buying a consistent, quick, convenient, something you can put in your mouth. And so if McDonald's tried to operate 
in any other way, they would go out of business. But they understand the value proposition. They understand that a better hamburger is not going to produce more customers. A better hamburger is not what their customer base wants. And I would tell you to carry that idea over into your business. If you're starting a new business and you're looking at buying equipment, do you really think a $500 home version of a recumbent bike is going to be less effective than a $2,500 fully commercial recumbent bike. You know, when you go to a Planet Fitness and you see 10 ellipticals, they're priced at $5,000 a piece. Do you really think that your client is going to care if you spend $5,000 on an elliptical or $500? on an elliptical. I want you to think about the decor, the setting. I want you to think about, you know, what can you do to fully understand why it is that your client is coming to you. And the better that you can understand that, the better you can focus on what's important to your client. You know, if, if somebody goes to McDonald's, what's important? The drive through They want their food hot, ready, and in their car in, I don't know, 30 seconds. That is more important than better food. They can go to other places. They can go to Chipotle. They can go to other places. They want it in their car in 30 seconds or whatever their guideline is. So what is your client coming for? You know, this morning I did an initial evaluation and right out of the gate, the patient told me, I don't know why I'm here. I need to get injections. And I said, okay, you know, well, why are you here? Um, if, if you're set on getting an injections, why don't you just go get the injections? And she said, because my insurance company requires me to come here first for six weeks and then I can go get the injections. So I understand what that client is looking for. She is not coming to me looking for a solution to her low back pain. She is coming to me looking for a ticket that gets her in line for her injection. Now I have a choice as a therapist. I can provide her what she is looking for. I can provide her what the insurance company is willing to pay for, or I can provide her what I think is best for her. And if she doesn't want it, she can refuse it. But the idea is the better I understand what it is that she actually wants, the better opportunity I have to decide is that what I'm in the business of? And if not, if I'm not in the business of selling a ticket to an injection, then I'm going to send her somewhere else or I'm going to, you know, just send it back to the physician saying it's an inappropriate referral. But you guys, you can run, McDonald's runs an exceptionally profitable business with low ticket items, with low cash or cart values. You know, but it's high volume, highly automated, uh, extremely efficient, and, and some would say extremely addictive. It's pretty easy to go get your McDonald's fix whenever you want. There are McDonald's that are open 24 seven. So I would tell you to not replicate the McDonald's model, but learn from their success. How can you take their lessons? Are you going to buy the real estate and put a clinic in real estate that you own? That's an opportunity. If I'm looking at real estate that might seem unappealing because the cap rate on it is just too low, but if I can put my own clinic in that building and my clinic will pump out the revenue to pay the mortgage as the building appreciates, now, it's far more appealing for me to buy a slightly overvalued property in the right area with the right location demographics and everything because I have a solution for that. You know, if, if I buy a truck, right? I buy a box truck. To me, it has no value. They could give it to me for free and it's still going to cost me money on insurance and gas and storage. But if I was running a restaurant and I wanted that box truck to be turned into a food truck, that truck could be producing 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on a weekend if I park it in the right location. The same truck can have very different value, very different return to two different individuals. And so my goal for you guys throughout all of these videos that I share is to extract as much possible value as you can, 
to develop your ideas, develop your an understanding of your business and what it is that you actually do. My guess is it's not physical therapy because if it was, you just go get a job down the street. You are creating and providing something different. So capture that value, understand it, deliver it, um, use the best marketing you can to get that message out, and then let me know how it goes. I wish you the best success. In the meantime, I'll see you on the next video.